now guys today we're gonna do some microscopy and for that we will need loops plastic pipettes slides cover glass petri dish immersion oil a bottle of water <laughs> water microscope and uh, samples from an expedition i went to yesterday So first of all, let's remind ourselves how those microscope parts are called. So those are ocular lenses. One for me and one for you. This thing is a diopter adjustment. If I had both lenses, it would be useful. But now I have only one, so never mind. This is a head this is an arm uh, this thing is a revolver those four lenses which gives you uh, magnification from 10x to 100x called objective lenses this is a mechanical stage where we will put our sample this is a coarse adjustment this is a fine adjustment and this little thing here is a stage control. Uh, yeah, we also have a torch here. I guess that's how it's called. I guess you can see the light now. And with this microscope, I will be able to give more light or less light uh, for my sample. And here also we have a diaphragm, which will help to work with uh, contrast of the sample. So I guess those are the parts of microscope which we will be using today and which are the most important parts. Now I think we can go to the expedition and collect our samples. Wild good more from my early morning expedition. I decided to go to Dudley to get some samples for microscopy. I am going to Ren Nest. It's a place which my supervisor advised me. He told me that it's full of uh, fossils, so I want to get some of those. Also, I want to get some soil samples. I want to get samples from a canal, a river, and, and something else. I haven't decided yet uh, the full list of samples uh, for the microscopy, but I hope it will be a lot. And by the way, I have a moon right there. My supervisor grew up in this area and he also told me that this area is rough, especially this hill and he told me not to go there, <laughs> but I want to force her. So here I am. I found those two little signs. I guess this is a, a trolley with the fossils that I want to get today. So I'm going this way. And uh, this is the entrance to the hill, so let's go! I guess it's time to collect my first sample and I will use this amazing um, expedition kit which my lab kindly donated to me for this expedition without even knowing that. So here in the kit I have beautiful blue um, gloves, permanent marker and two mils epidorps. So, the first one sample will be this moth. <laughs> okay, the first sample has been collected. So it is a uh, moss from <laughs> a tree. Um, and location runs, ran, runs hill. I hope you will forgive my pronunciation and forget. Pretty nice. Look how 
Stoi. So welcome back to my improvised bio lab. This is a very high tech uh, stand for uh, the other camera, which will give you um, an image of the things that I see in my microscope. So I think now we can begin with our first sample, which is <laughs> somewhere here. So our first sample will be a moth from a tree and I'm quite interested who's living there inside the moth. So for get those creatures out of the moth, I need to um, add some water to the sample first and then I will be able to see who's there, who's occupying this beautiful green space. So, a little bit of water. Um, actually, I really want to see the water bears. Um, I saw some videos of the water bears and I think they're very cute. Uh, but apart from water bears, there's supposed to be much more creatures. Um, so, let's have a look what we've got here. Okay, so I think I will also put a cover glass uh, on the top of the sample. Uh, most of the times, if you want to see um, creatures that are comprised of many cells, you don't actually need the cover glass. It can damage uh, some of the creatures. Well, unfortunately, I didn't find a water bear, but I spotted a diatom and a small reticula on 10x magnification. And uh, this is how most leaves look like at 4x and 10x magnification. This moss also looks kind of attractive to me. So I guess I'll get this one as well. Well, um, this moss looked like the previous one. No one interesting. Just soil and decomposed organics. But here I switched the objective lens to 100 so that now we are able to see single cells of a moss leaf with little green dots inside. Chloroplast. Oh, I finally found it. This is a wren nest. Let's go. Let's dig some fossils out of the dirt. Um, I guess this is a trailer bite uh, well I'm mm -hmm. using lots of my imagination to, to imagine this is a trailer bite I hope it, it is so uh, this lovely puddle with uh, the clouds inside it will be my sample number three this piece of uh, Sediment looks quite promising, I guess. <gasps> you put it, I found it! I knew it! I knew it will be here! Creature! A eh, creature! <laughs> it's here! It's here! Honey bunny! Who are you? What are you? Well, I didn't find much of a drill bite here. But I found this uh, little beautiful uh, square of um, pink quartz, I guess. So I decided that my sample number four will be the dirt or probably rocks from the wren's nest. I think I'll pick up something. Um, I guess I will pick up those stuff <laughs> come on go inside the five run bros my sample number five a morning dew
And the last one sample is a puddle in a rock. So let's get some. Well, I can clearly see that on the bottom of the puddle there are some kind of um, algae. So I want to check out what's there in the bentos of the puddle. We've got um, plankton of the puddle and this is a bentos of this puddle. Where part of the puddle I found phytoplankton a diatom and a colelastrum algae. Diatoms, by the way, generate about 20 to 50 percent of the oxygen produced on the planet each year. So they are quite important microorganisms which can be found in the freshwater, oceans, and in the soil as well. In the bentos, I found another one lovely guy from a Malamonas genus. These algae are individually living cells that are covered in silica scales and bristles and have two flagella. One is short and another one is long and can easily be seen in a light microscope. Malamons uses its long flagella to move in the environment and here our little fella shows how nicely and fast he can utilize it. So the last one sample um, I want to take from this beautiful Dudley canal. In the canal I caught a corpse of a Daphnia, which was quite weird to find here. Daphnias usually can be found only in clean fresh water, so it was no wonder why it was dead in the Dudley canal. And all over Daphnia's body you can see a fist of diplomonads. Diplomonads are small protozoan cells, usually have two nuclei and four or eight flagella. The most famous member of this order is Giardia lamblia, the cause of the diarrheal illness Giardiasis. So there were all of the samples that I have collected during the expedition. I hope you enjoyed the microscopy. And if you want to see something else under the microscope, feel free to leave a comment down below what would you like to see. Maybe I will organize another one expedition. But until then, see you in the next videos. Пока-пока!